Epoch Server tutorial series where I show you how to set up and modify your own DAISY Epoch Server. This video will be about updating your server to a new version. I will be updating from 1.042 to 1.051 for this video, but this will work for any new updates that will come after this as well. It is very important for you to know that you will have to install all of your custom mods after updating each time. So if you have admin tools or any other type of mod installed on your server, those will have to be re-added after doing this update. There's no way around this, so each time there's an update you're going to have to do this. I highly suggest you back up your entire server before updating so that you have a reference to all of your old files and in the event the update does not work. So the first thing you need to do is download the new server and client files for the latest release. And you'll do that by going to the Epoch Mod website and over here in the DAISY Epoch section. You can come down here and download the server files and you can either manually download the client files or you can use your DAISY Commander or Play With 6. If you already have it downloaded with your DAISY Commander, simply go to your ARMA2 Operation Arrowhead install directory and copy the at DAISY Epoch folder. I already have mine downloaded here. I have the client files, the at DAISY Epoch folder, and the DAISY Epoch server 1051. Go ahead and download those now if you haven't already. I downloaded them beforehand because it can take a while for them to download and I don't want to hold the video up by just downloading them on. So to begin the actual install you need to navigate to your DAISY Epoch server folder. When you've got that open you have to delete the two at folders here, the MP missions folder, and the keys folder. These need to be deleted otherwise you can end up with leftover files or a server that doesn't work. So now that those are deleted we can copy over the new files into the folder here. First thing we need to do is copy over the server files. The server files you'll be needing are all of these here. Just copy it and paste it over. You'll be asked to replace some items. Go ahead and do it. If you want, you can delete the folders beforehand, but for these ones, it's not a big deal. So now that we've replaced all of the server files, we can go ahead and copy over the client files as well. And for me, that's my at Daisy Epoch folder that I've already put on the desktop for this tutorial. And the reason why you need to update this one as well is you have the old client data and you need the new client data. The server actually reads from that to get some of the information that's required to run the server properly. If you don't update the client data as well as the server, it's not going to work properly. Now once everything's finished copying into your epoch server, you can go ahead and open up the file in your instance folder. For me, I'm using instance 11 Genars. So I'll open that folder and we need to open config right here. I'm going to open it with notepad because that's my preferred editor. And then what you can do is go into the config examples back in your epoch server and open the config for the new instance that you're using. So like I said before I'm using instance 11 Shinaris and I'm going to open the config in here as well. I'm going to put them in two different windows so that you can see everything properly. Now you can see that there's some differences so everything has to be changed. This is the new one right here on the right and this is my old one on the left. What I'm going to do is copy the stuff I want to keep from my old one on the left into the new one on the right. So I want to keep my host name. So I'll copy that over here. 
If you have a password, go ahead and copy that over. I have an admin password, not a server password, so I'm going to copy the admin password over here. My max players is currently at 20. I want to change that 50 down to 20 now. Most of these will stay the same. For my message of the day, I have something a little different, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that over as well. Make sure you're very careful when you're copying. You don't want to have multiple sets of quotes or brackets or anything like that. If you want, you can copy the entire line. Instead of copying what's in the brackets, I could have copied this whole line. But you can't do that for host name. As you can see, there's a difference here, and we will get into that here in a minute. Let's see what else is different. I have pretty much everything else is the same except I change my difficulty to regular. So I'll go ahead and change that now. As you can see there's a little there's a little difference here between the two. Required secure ID has been added. So the reason why you copy from your old one into the new is to make sure that you only copy what you need and all the new stuff stays there properly. If you want, you can just use the new file entirely and redo all your additions. But doing it this way, you don't have to forget adding something in or do something incorrectly. You can just generally copy over what you need. And now, for future updates, there's nothing else you need to change in this. However, for the 1051 update that we're doing, the epoch editors had done this a little hastily. They forgot to change some of the files properly. As you can see, this says 1051. We need to change this to 105.1 because that's the update that we're using. If you don't change that, it's going to show up as 105 in Daisy Commander, and some people may not want to join it because of that, or they won't be able to join it because they're using the wrong version. So now that all of that is done, what we need to do is because this is in the config examples, we need to actually copy all of this stuff into our old file. So now I've moved all of my edits into the main file and I'm going to save it. So this has saved into our actual server and this was just the example one. You don't need to save the example one, you can just keep it as it is. And now what we'll have to do is we'll have to look in the Hive EXT. This is the example Hive EXT. And I'll go ahead and open that in my preferred editor. And then we go back to our server and find our Hive EXT. And now what we can do is we can split the screens again on the right is going to be the example and on the left will be the one that we're using when you go through the file you'll see that there's actually no differences between 1051 and the old 1042 that we were using so there's actually no changes that we need to do this time but in later updates there may be a difference and if there is you'll have to change that accordingly so for now we can close those lastly you'll need to open your SQL editor for me I use my SQL workbench because it's an amazing tool and really easy to use I have that in my epoch server directory right here so I'm gonna go ahead and open that now if you use Navicat or any of those other ones, just go ahead and open them. And then for my SQL, you'll have to open the database right here, and you'll see that this pops up. And for me, it shows that I'm not actually connected to the database. The reason for that is I don't have my SQL running. To open that up, I'll have to run XAMPP. If you have XAMPP, or a similar tool, open that up and run it and start your MySQL. Here you can see that I have MySQL and I'm starting it now and it's showing up. So that's up and running and we need to refresh this to make sure that there we go, we're running our, our uh, MySQL server. 
Now select which database you're using. For me it's DAISY Epoch and make sure that in MySQL that you have the correct one open. And what I need to do here is open an SQL file. Now go to your Epoch server directory. For me that's on my desktop. And now once you're in your Epoch server directory, go ahead and open up your SQL folder. In here you'll see there's a new 105 update or whichever update you're using. If you're using a different one, choose that one. But for this tutorial we're using the 1051 and so we're going to use the 105 updates. Opening that you'll see this here. You'll have to execute this file. Depending on which editor you use, it's a little different. But for this one, you just click the lightning bolt and it'll execute everything in the script. And you'll see down here what's happened. So we have properly updated all of these, but there's a little issue right here. The quantity item wasn't properly updated. Now this isn't really a big deal. It doesn't matter that much, but we're going to go ahead and fix that. And the error tells you that you're using safe mode and you tried to update the table with the where clause in a special key column. So to disable safe mode, we have to go into preferences, SQL queries, and change that. So in my SQL workbench, you'll go to edit, preferences. So over in SQL queries, what we need to do is change the safe updates to off and select OK. And if we attempt to do this again, it'll again say that we are in safe mode. The reason being that we never actually reconnected to our database. So what we can do is close out our database and reconnect to it by just reselecting it there. Run this file again and you will see that it all worked out fine. You won't have to do this in the future now, but if you didn't have this problem, don't worry about it. If you did, just follow what I did and everything will work out perfectly fine. And this actually concludes the server update. Everything is working fine. Now you should be able to log into your server and get everything up and running. But you will have to change some of the stuff in your init SQF again. Do the same method as before where we change the config in high VXT by referencing your old files. And remember that you have to install all old server mods. If you had the auto refuel, the tow and lifts, missions, anything like that, you'll have to reinstall it again. So go back and watch my videos for that if you don't remember how to do it. Make sure you go back to the correct sources to get them. Don't download anything from a third party source unless you trust it. As always, thanks for watching. Be on the lookout for more videos. If you like my videos, go ahead and subscribe. I put four up as much as possible. It's not really a consistency every week, but I get them up there as much as I can. If you have any requests, put them in the comments below. You can request tutorials for anything in the Daisy Epoch series. If you want to see a certain type of mission system covered or anything like that, the video coming right up after this is actually a mission system that me and a friend of mine have modified. If something's not working properly, go ahead and leave me a comment for that as well. I usually get back to you within one to three days depending on how busy I am with whatever is going on in my life. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.